Do you want to know how to beat the bookies at their own game? I'm a professional sports better and I have been doing that exact thing over the last nine years. In this video, I'm going to tell you the exact strategy that you can employ to beat the bookmakers at their own game and win long term from sports betting. This is going to be a no BS video. I'm going to explain to you the strategy, then I'm going to tell you three simple steps that you can employ starting from today to start earning money from sports betting. So let's get into it. No mucking around. As I said, I'm going to explain to you the strategy first because it's very important to understand the why behind what we're doing. And then I'm going to tell you the exact strategy. You need to know both these things because they work in tandem. So make sure you stick around for this part and then the strategy. So the first point that we must understand is that there is a strategy to be in the bookies and that it is possible. There's a lot of people out there who think it's not possible to earn money from sports betting long term. They think that the house always wins. But they don't understand that the term the house always wins comes from the casinos. It comes from games like roulette. It does not come from sports betting. There are professional gamblers out there. There are people who earn their full-time income from gambling. They do exist. I am one of them. Which means that if you're not doing the same right now, there is secrets that you don't know about how to make money from sports betting. So first things first, we have to understand that it is possible to beat the game. If we understand that it's possible to beat the game, the second thing to understand is that there's two portions of gamblers. There's professional gamblers and then there's recreational gamblers. We want to be professional gamblers. We don't want to be recreational gamblers because recreational gamblers lose their money consistently. We want to do what the professionals are doing. So all we need to look at is exactly what the pros are doing and copy that. And I'm going to tell you exactly what they do right now. So the difference between someone who's a professional slash full-time gambler like myself and somebody who's just a recreational gambler who does it on the side is one main thing. There's obviously many, many things I've learned over the years that I do different than a recreational gambler, but it really comes down to one main thing. And that main thing is called value, aka betting for value. While I bet for value, the recreational gamblers are just betting on who they think is going to win. But let me explain that a little bit deeper. So on the lead up to a sporting event, whether that be football, hockey, tennis, basketball, horse racing, MMA, it doesn't matter. On the lead up to any sporting event, you will start hearing fans speak about that sporting event. You will hear the press, the media, the internet, and what they'll focus on is who's going to win that event. They'll talk about the upcoming match, they'll talk about injuries, they'll talk about who's going to win, they'll talk about who's in good form, who's been looking bad lately, why one team's going to beat the other. This is what normies do. This is what the recreational gamblers, the recreational fans speak about. And then a large portion of those people will go and place bets on that sporting event. But they're placing bets based off the form, based off who they think is going to win, just as I mentioned. So we don't want to be doing that. The very thing that we need to be talking about is the very thing that they don't talk about, which is the odds. Sports betting always comes down to the odds. But 99% of gamblers don't even know what the odds mean. They see a plus 400 odds or 4 to 1 or $4 or $3.20 or whatever it may be, depending on where you live in the world. They see these odds and don't think nothing of it. They just place a bet on who they think is going to win. But we're not going to do that. We're going to look at the odds very differently. So I'm going to tell you the number one key to success in sports betting right now. And after that, we're going to get onto the free step guide. So the number one key to success, the number one thing that you need to understand when you're placing bets moving forward from today is this sentence. Every odds range has an implied win percentage behind it. I'm going to say that again because it's very important. Every odds range has an implied win percentage behind it. The recreational gamblers don't know this, but the professional gamblers do. And this implied win percentage is literally what we use to make money from the sports books. So every odds range, no matter if it's minus 200, plus 100, plus 110, or in decimal odds, $1.50, $2, $2.10. Or in fractional odds, 1 to 2, even money. You get my drift. It doesn't matter what odds it is. Every odds range has a hidden implied win percentage behind it. You need to know this win percentage to profit. So I'm going to show you exactly how to find each win percentage of every odds range. So first thing we're going to do is go to aceodds.com. And I'm going to do it right now along with you to demonstrate. So we scroll down on aceodds.com's homepage and we click Odds Converter. Now you can see it's got four sections here. Fraction, Decimal, American and Implied Probability. 
Now your job is to type a set of odds into one of these three sections and the implied win probability will auto-populate. In other words, it's gonna tell you the implied win probability of the odds that you just typed in. So if we type in plus 100 in the American odds section, you will see that under the implied win probability section, 50% auto-populates. Now what that means is that plus 100 odds has an implied win probability of 50%. In other words, the bookmakers are saying that this selection should win 50% of the time. Now let's try it with plus 200. If we type in plus 200 in the American section, you can see that 33.3% auto-populates in the implied win probability section. That means that the bookmakers are saying this selection has a 33.3% chance of winning. And we can do this with any type of odd set on the planet. Minus 110, plus 400. In decimal odds, $1.67, $1.58, $1.22. Whatever it may be, every single odds range has an implied win probability behind it and I've just showed you how to find it. Now here's the fun part. I'm gonna tell you how to use this information to beat the bookmakers at their own game. So we're gonna move on to the free step guide right now. There's only three things you need to do to earn money from the bookmakers long term. Number one is do what we just did work out the implied probability of the odds that you are looking to bet on. So let's say that Roger Federer was facing Novak Djokovic this weekend in a tennis game, and you wanted to bet on Roger Federer. Well, then you would go to aceodds.com, you would go to their odds converter, and you would type in the number of whatever Roger Federer's odds was. So let's say Roger Federer was a plus 125 underdog in that match. We go to this website, we type in plus 125 in American odds. Or if you bet on decimal odds, you would type in 2.25 in the decimal odds section. What you will see now is that the implied probability of that odds set is 44.4%. So basically the bookies are saying that Roger Federer has a 44% chance of winning this match. So that's first step done. Easy enough, right? Now the second step is the hardest step. We need to determine what the true win percentage is. Now determining the true win percentage of any sporting event is not an easy thing to do. But this is where the magic happens. Because the bookmakers are not always right. The market is not always right. So for example, the bookmakers saying that Roger Federer has a 44% chance of winning this match. But they may be completely wrong. They may have made a mistake on this match. It's these mistakes that we need to find and capitalize on. So you can determine the true win percentage a multitude of ways. If you're a really smart handicapper, if you know lots about a specific sport, then you may be able to determine the true win percentage off your knowledge of that sport. There's not that many people that can actually do this because most people think they know more about sports than they actually do. But there are people out there who can determine the true win percentage of a sport based on their knowledge of it. Another way to do this is by going on the exchange, I recommend Betfair, and finding the odds on Betfair. Once you find the odds for that match on Betfair, compare it to the odds on the sports books and see if there's any disparity. The Betfair markets are usually much sharper than the sports books, and that goes for most exchanges as well, not just Betfair, but Betfair is the largest, so we'll speak about them right here. If there's a disparity in the Betfair odds, well then what we'll do is we'll type in the Betfair odds into the odds converter on aceodds.com and we'll find out what the win percentage for those odds are. So bringing it back to the Roger Federer example, if we go on to Betfair and we find that Roger Federer is at an average price of plus 110 on Betfair, we'll go and type that into asods.com and we find that plus 110 has an implied win probability of 47.6%. Meaning that Betfair is saying that Roger Federer wins 47% of the time, but the sports books are saying that he only wins 44% of the time. So there's a difference in the implied probability as you can see here. This is another way you can determine the true win percentage because as I said, Betfair usually are more accurate than the sports books. There's other ways you can determine the true win percentage, but that is basically your job. You need to determine the true win percentage of the odds. I do this in the sport MMA betting and that's because I've been betting on MMA for 10 years now. I'm very good at finding the true win percentage of any MMA fight. I study hours of film, break down tons of stats and use my 10 year knowledge to understand the true win percentage of any fight. I then get that percentage, compare it to the sportsbook's percentage, and find out if there's any disparity between the odds. If there's a disparity, that's how we make money. So let's go on to the third and final step. So in the first step, we determine the implied win percentage of the odds, 
And in the second step, we determine the true win percentage. Now, the third step is simple. It is simply to check if there is any disparity between our win percentage and the sportsbook's win percentage. If the win percentage that you came up with is higher than the sportsbook's win percentage, well, then you have a plus EV bet. You have an edge over the sportsbooks. And those are just boring gambler terms that basically mean you have a good bet. Well done. You have found a good bet. Because it's simple. You are saying that the selection has a higher chance of winning than the bookies are saying. This is where we can capitalize and make money. What this means is that over the long term, if you are placing this bet, you are going to win because that selection is going to win more times than the bookies are expecting it to win. So the payout you get is correlated to that. This is all we need to do to make money from sports betting. We need to find plus EV bets. We need to find bets where our win percentage is higher than the sports books win percentage. And taking it right back to the start, this is why there's a big difference between professional and recreational gamblers. Have you ever heard of a recreational gambler talking in this terms? You've probably never heard it. And there's a reason for that. It's because those guys are always broke and they don't understand how to bet but we do understand how to bet. Essentially, we're taking money off them because they're giving money to the sports books and we're taking money off the sports books. It's player versus player in this market. So we need to be thinking differently from most other players. And that's exactly what this video has taught you. Now, I do want to give a little bonus step. Those are the three steps, but I want to give a bonus step. And then we'll do a little bit of a recap at the end to make it even more simple. So the bonus step is that you need to understand variance. You need to understand that although you may be placing good bets, it doesn't mean that you're going to win every bet. Even in this example I showed you today, we said that Roger Federer has a 47% chance of winning, but the bookmakers are saying that Roger Federer has a 44% chance of winning. Even though that's a good bet because our win percentage is higher, it doesn't mean we're going to win. In fact, we're only giving him a 47% chance of winning. So we're saying more often than not, more than five times out of 10, we're going to lose that bet. But we are also saying we're going to win that bet more than the sports books expect us to win that bet, which is why over the long term, we will turn a profit. But the bonus bet is just to understand that you ain't gonna win every bet. You may be placing good bets and still lose. You can go through days, weeks of losing, even though every single bet you placed was a good bet. But in reverse, you can also go through days and weeks of winning, even when every bet you place is a bad bet. That's why the worst gamblers in the world can still have crazy runs where they earn a lot of money and the best gamblers in the world can still have terrible runs where they lose a lot of money. But over the long term, which is all we care about in sports betting, we don't care about a day, we care about a year, two years, three years. But over the long term, the person placing good bets, just like the one I showed you in this example, is always going to be the one making profit. So a little recap before you go. Anytime you're looking to place a bet in the future, do these three steps. Work out the implied win percentage of what the sports books are offering. Determine the true win percentage. And if the true win percentage is higher than what the sports books are offering, it's a good bet and you can place that bet. Number four, ride out the variance and profit long term. So you've just learned how a professional gambler works. Although it's a simple three-step guide, it still may take you a long time to fully understand and internalize this concept, especially if you're quite new to professional sports betting. So I would recommend re-watching this video a couple of times until you fully internalize it. Since I've given all this information for free, I would appreciate if you like, subscribe to the channel, and comment on the video. And if you have any questions about this, comment, and I will answer your questions back directly in the comments. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.